Welcome back to the Edge Show. Office supply chain Staples has been looking for ways to save some paper. Their most recent earnings report showed a 6% drop in sales over the previous year. The company closed over 100 stores in North America in 2014. They're cutting down on competition by buying up rival Office Depot for $6 billion. And when it comes to employees, they're cracking down on part-time workers. BuzzFeed News reports the company is threatening to fire part-timers who log more than 25 hours a week. A note posted in one of the stable stores explains associates who clock more than 25 hours a week could face termination or multiple incidents. The note cites a recent changes for the tough stance. Many are questioning whether the move is related to the implementation of the health care law employer mandate. The Affordable Care Act requires employers to provide health insurance for employees working more than 30 hours a week. Uh, if they don't, they could face a fine of $3,000 per person. Staples denies Obamacare played a part in this cost cutting. A spokesman uh, says their part-time policy predates the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. They say managers uh, may have reiterated the policy in an effort to improve the efficiency and the competitiveness of the stores. The company, once supported by Mitt Romney's Bain Capital, is an example, I think, of Mitt Romney's economy. Just going after the workers. Joining me tonight, Congressman Jim McDermott of Washington. Congressman, good to have you with us tonight. Is, is this Obamacare, is, is this being used to, to squeeze the bottom line on workers? Your thoughts on this? I think it's not caused by Obamacare, and, and if they, they're saying it's not. What's happening here is that the whole market is being squeezed, and they're buying up office or Home Depot or Office Depot, and they are, they're in trouble financially, and they are trying to keep their employees down at 25 hours. Now, the, the real question we ought to be asking is, where do they stand on the $15 an hour? Do they think there should be a, a minimum wage increase? Because because at 25 hours a week, you can't possibly support a family. The people who are working there, you, you read the stories, they're also working someplace else another 25 hours. They're working 50 hours a week in two different places. So the economy is not working for a lot of families at this point. You know, Republicans have been trying to redefine full-time employment under Obamacare uh, to be 40 hours a week. Would this help or harm workers as you see it? Well, I think if you take in the big picture, Ed, this is in the long term good for us because they're driving us towards single payer. Employers are trying to get out of participating in the employer mandate. They don't want to provide for their employees if they can get out of it. So they're all playing all kinds of games. And ultimately, this 40-hour week thing means everybody whose people are working 38 hours or 35 hours, they aren't going to have to offer them health insurance either. They will come into the subsidized exchanges and be a part of the federal system. I, I think we're moving to a system where business is trying to offload their responsibility for the health of their workers. Well, and their workers can go get in the exchange if the exchange is set up in the state that they're operating in. I mean, when you take a company that is dealing in all 50 states, well, on one hand, Obamacare is helping them. On the other hand, they're trying to shed off the expense. I mean, it's a, it's a race to the bottom line. That, that's what it comes down to. Well, you see that you've just pointed out the reason why there has to be a national plan. There has to be a national single plan because you can't have 50 different states. A company like this that's in 50 different states, their workers will be going to 50 different exchanges, all getting different things. They won't know what they're, they won't have anybody to turn to to say, is this good or is this bad? Because every place will be different. And I, I really think that the uh, whole question here of whether we're going to have 40-hour weeks is whether the employers want to give in health insurance to their workers or not. And well, in my view, they don't. And the bottom line here is nothing's going to change legislatively on this. Republicans are never going to jump in and tell businesses they can't operate this way. They're going to say, well, the free market, they can they can limit it to as many hours as they possibly want. So this problem isn't going away anytime soon, nor is it going to be addressed anytime soon, correct? 
Right. The president put the agenda out there. He said, if, you know, minimum wage should be increased and so forth. He's talking about the middle class. We're talking about middle class people who are working 24 hours a, a week in two different jobs to hold on to their house yeah. and their family and their education. They're struggling like mad. And we, we're not getting any help from the Republicans. Congressman Jim McDermott, good to have you with us. Appreciate your time. Coming you. up. There may be trouble in Hillary land. The Rapid Response Panel rips the cover off this one. Speaking of covers, college football gets, college football gets? Yes, it's first top 25 poll of 2015. Big names revealed in tonight's two-minute drill. Stay with us. I'm Hampton Pearson with your CNBC Market Rap.